competent have an agreement with the earth. And the agreement with the earth is that we will stop being children. We will start being stewards. We will start respecting the earth. We will start repairing our damage. And what's more, as proof, we will bring life and water back to the surface of Mars. We will do this as a creator of planets, not just stewards of living planets, but creators of living planets. And it is entirely technically possible. Now think if you believe the Earth to be a conscious singularity, a feminine singularity, then what would it be to know that something as small as we are, as insignificant potentially as we think we might be, have made the promise and the serious commitment that we will bring life back to the surface of Mars, the masculine. Could you imagine the feeling of that? Imagine if you were the only person on the planet and some small insignificant creature, if that's what you believe, was able to say, I can find someone of your same species so that you are no longer alone. The earth is an active participant in what we're doing, an active participant. And the earth does not wish to harm us at all. And what happened in the cycle of Japan and Christchurch and what will be happening on the west coast of America whenever it happens is not designed to perpetuate the system or destroy us. It is just a fact that if we build our homes on earthquake zones, if we build our homes on shore, if we build our homes in floodplains, if we build our homes on volcanoes, then we must face the fact that we have built our homes in pretty poor conditions. So that's all I want to say about changing world. Because it upsets me and I hope it upsets you when people still today find reason to come up and say, oh, well, it's God's punishment or, oh, well, it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of their world. The world that lies to us, the world that treats us as slaves, the world that teaches us to believe that we have no ability to change anything. Well, that is coming to an end. Well, let's move on to something positive about changing of the world. And probably an area that needs no no less, well, certainly needs more changing than anything else is the financial system. Now, the banks, the private banks, have used many psychological weapons to be around for more than 2,000 years. Well, that is coming to an end as well. Now, I said to you that there are two documents and I ask you to download them. <clears throat> We're going to go through a number of stages here. And given the time, I'm not going to be able to spend too much time, but all of you deserve, all of you have the absolute right to know because you cater is yours as much as mine, thinking that has been done in a new financial system that will replace the corrupt system and the unworkable system of control of the existing parasites, which is now falling apart before our eyes. Now, the first document that I want to look at is the Supreme Financial System. And I'm going to, I'm going to scan some of this because of the time. But I hope in, obviously, in more conversations and in dedicated conversations, we'll be able to go through this in more detail. So if you download the document, the Supreme Financial System, you have an introductory document 
that starts to give you some of the background as to what is the supreme financial system. So let, let's start. The current system in the world, a debt-based system, is called by the acronym GFS, Global Financial System. Now they tell us it's a global system, but in reality, it is not designed to be global. Never was. It is an arrangement between cartels that choose to work together for the most part rather than against one another. But it is not a global financial system. It was never designed to be that. Now, what is the supreme financial system? The supreme financial system is a system designed as the first truly global financial system. And it, and it mirrors many of the essential architectures of the existing system. Let's begin. The global financial system is based on the trading of negotiable instruments. Those negotiable instruments are based on an ecclesiastical frame called indulgences. And if you go into the one-heaven.org area and look at ecclesiastical deed polls, there is an entire article there about indulgences. And if you don't believe what I just said, please go and read that because in that article it makes plain that they don't hide this fact. The existing system does not hide the fact that every negotiable instrument is an indulgence. Why do we know this? Because those officials that create the original, not the extracts, the first banknote, the first receipt, the first act, are called scrivener or scrivener notaries. And as we've said, the word scrivener or scrivener comes from two Latin words, which means literally the scribe of indulgences. So they tell you what they are even though the system has become wholly ignorant to its ecclesiastical roots. Well, under that system, under indulgences, under the whole concept of the sacrament of penance, the Roman cult acknowledges the existence of the treasury of one heaven. It is a fundamental precept that the treasury of one heaven exists. Well, under the covenant of one heaven, we acknowledge the treasury of one heaven exists, but they have no influence over it. The treasury of one heaven, as the stewards of divine trust and divine credit, I'll be one moment. Oh, hi, sorry, I'm just on a call. Sorry, I'm just on a call, thanks for that. Okay, thank you. Yes, thanks, I can't sorry. Sorry about that, we'll keep going. The treasure of one heaven is acknowledged by the existing system as the apex of their system. If the treasure of one heaven did not exist, the sacrament of penance could not function, the negotiable instruments would have no ecclesiastical value and their entire system wouldn't work. So the system that they have developed and the system that we have are identical at the apex. The only difference is we say that the divine grants to each and every one of us and collectively each and every one of us under the covenant of one heaven choose this system. The Roman cult has absolutely no control. The parasites, the black or white kazars have absolutely no control over this system. Within the system, we identify that there are seven treasuries the Global Union Treasury, the African Union Treasury, the Asian Treasury, the Arabian Treasury, the America's Union Treasury, Euro, Oceanic, is all there. The reserve banks that are supported by those treasuries. Key trade zones that are underwritten by those treasuries. And all the credit we will ever need already exists. And for every unit of credit, there is a unique identification, a unique registration, and once a credit has been created, it cannot be destroyed. Cannot be destroyed. And because all the credit 
that we will ever need has been created. There is no need for any institution that claims its function as being a creator or a lender of credit. If there is an institution that says our role is primarily to create and lend and manage credit in a society, well, that is the role of reserve banks. There is no need for any private operators of those kind of systems. And I hope you all understand what I'm saying and you'll see what I mean in a moment, what this means. So the document goes through and explains the principles of currency which are completely in alignment with the canons of law. It even refers to canons of law. It goes through and talks about the underwriting of currency and the different use of methods of underwriting. For example, we're led to believe that lawful money is money that is underwritten by gold or silver. But as I just said to you, a negotiable instrument by its very nature is an indulgence. So what is gold and what is silver? Well, gold and silver ultimately under that model is nothing more than insurance and perversely, nothing more than the illusion of something of value. The real value remains the ecclesiastical model where the books are aligned in the accounting model of Venice of debt and credit, ledger accounts being aligned in heaven and on earth. For some reason, the Roman cult believes that God is a Venetian in accounting. So again, with the time, it's going to be difficult for me to go through all these different sections, but when you read it, you go and have a look, for example, at page 18 of Supreme Financial System, and you'll see the levels of currencies. You'll see the Supreme Trust credits, Universal Gold credits, Globe Silver credits, Union, National, and so on. So you can see the different levels. Now, if you want to understand how this comes from, or where this comes from, go back to one dash heaven or one hyphen heaven dot org. Open up the Come to One Heaven, and if you go to the Come to One Heaven, it actually tells you where this comes from. It actually tells you how it's structured, and I'm referring to articles one one seven and one one eight of the Come to One Heaven. One one seven, supreme units of value. It describes how supreme credits are created. Describes exactly how they're created. And then when you get to 118, the Treasury One Heaven, it describes how all the credit we will ever need has already been created, ipso facto. Well, I hope you are excited by this as I am, because this is a momentous time for these things to come into life. So please have a read. There's a lot there, and I want to move on to another document before we get into uh, describing the private banks and some of the things that we're going to stop. And the document I'm going to ask you to have a look at is the Supreme Financial System Products. It's a second link that is there. Now, these PDFs will be updated as we go. Fortunately, there's been a huge amount of work to be done. But what I wanted to show you on this second document is starting to look at the different view of how you will be able to obtain credit for the things that you need in the future. This is the beginnings of the mechanics of the community and capturing your energy and using your energy and no longer being held hostage by banks that on one hand claim your birth records as their property and also are quite happy from time to time to slash and burn through foreclosure and unemployment and credit tightening. If you look at this second document, you'll see that we have a summary of different types of products. Pro products, in fact, that 
are the essential concepts that underwrite their system, 